What's going on guys? Hope this game is here, but we're working on it. My name is Jamie, this is Jacob. And today we're looking at our part two of our Biospike 101 series, and this one's focused on cross maps and long shots in Infinite Warfare. Now we don't have uh, private matches, so what Jamie is going to be doing while I'm showing this first little shot off is uh, trying to defend me from anyone trying to attack. The first thing I want to talk about is the distance and drop of the uh, Biospike. So first way I'm going to do it is by plugging myself into this fence here and throwing directly up. Now this should drop down right before the hay bales if I follow it along. That is how short, right in the hay bales, there we go, that's how short the throwing knife is if you do straight up shots in Infinite Warfare. In previous Call of Duties it's been almost like a half map kind of ordeal where if you've aimed as high as you can it will fly a long distance, like almost four or five times that length. So it's a real change for Infinite Warfare to have this really, really small arc. Um, and we've just got to get used to that because with things like domination flags, high as you can, which are quite popular, and then search bomb spots as well, we've just got to work out that it's it's a really short distance from, from where you stand to where it lands if you're aiming as high as you can. Now the next one is your standard cross map type shot. I'm going to aim where I would right after I kill this guy. I'm going to aim where I would to get a normal cross map in a previous Call of Duty. It's probably about there, would you say? Yeah, and that would probably travel That's probably all over gonna... that green building there. Yeah, it would normally cross the whole, damn it, green building um, and get someone on the other side. I can do it from here, let's just do it with this. So, standing in this corner, a nice cross map would probably be about there, would go over that building for sure, right? I Looking think so, yeah. I think um, so. Now, in this one, when I release that, you'll see the drop there. That doesn't even make, did it, did it even make the wall? Yeah, it just made the wall on the building. So yeah, that's a massive right difference. There. Huge difference to drop in, um, in Infinite Warfare. What you're actually going to have to do, and the other thing as well I'll just touch on is the flick. If you flick, um, that used to be a thing as well, but if I flick like that, it doesn't change anything. I almost hit that guy again. I think it's even shorter. Yeah, I think that actually went shorter with the flick. Yep, that's shorter. So, the flick does nothing, but we do have a really handy tip for something that might help you, and that's if you att attach the perk uh, gung-ho, which is by default on this rapid response class. So when we go out here, Gung Ho allows you to throw your uh, bio spike while running, and that makes a huge difference in this game. In previous Call of Duties, there's never been an issue that running affects the actual length or distance of your Tomahawk, Combat Axe, throw, or whatever it may be. Uh, but in this game, it does. So if you're running with your throwing knife, it actually makes a huge difference to the distance and the length that it throws at. Now, I'm going to try here to run forward and throw. I know there's a building behind that one, the bowling one, so I'm going to try and. Oops sort of aim across a little bit and see if I can get it near Jamie. And I'm just gonna run first and then throw like that. That flick doesn't add any momentum, it's the actual gung-ho perk that does it. There it is. Um, and we should be able to, yeah, see the cross map there. So it makes a massive difference. So basically in other Call of Duties, what you'd do is you'd flick the tomahawk or the combat axe um, a bit like this. You'd, if you wanna get it to that building, you'd flick it like that. That's now pretty much a redundant feature. Um, you just wanna have gung-ho on, make sure that's attached and you want to run before you throw your throw knife. Now you can see in this example that Jamie got um, on the new map this morning that came out, this one he sort of runs forward a little bit when he throws this long shot. Exactly. And you so can I... see that the loop doesn't come down, it doesn't drop in uh, in height. Yeah, so I'm not actually flicking the combat axe, oh sorry, the throw knife there, I'm not flicking it at all. I'm still holding it in place but I'm running just really, really slightly, I just run before the shot's thrown. So that gives me that extra bit of like distance um, and it also takes away the drop, so it takes away that real like loop that the throwing knife has. So and pretty much noted, it's gung-ho and running forward is the only thing you're going to need to get a nice long distance throwing knife. And the other one that we've got an in-game example of was in our montage that we dropped the other night and that is a straight up shot on the map frontier if you're looking at it. This is a really cool shot. You just kind of throw up and because it, it the arc is so small, you can get to the bio spike before it's even dropped. You can see it, who you're throwing to, you can see it hit. All right, so just to wrap up, we've got the high as you can, we've got the smallest loop in pretty much Call of Duty history, uh, we've got the the distance, if you want a nice long throwing knife, you really want to have that gung-ho perk attached and you want to start running before you shot. Um, and then you just need to, it's just a lot of practice as well, to, if you're aiming for people in, in windows, sort of like mid shots, like half, half map mid shots, um, it's just sort of, you know, working out by using the throwing knife 
working out the distance and sort of figuring out from there whether you need to do a run or you need to just do a standing shot. Um, so yeah, just a lot of practice involved, but hopefully those tips give you guys a bit of an insight. It did take us about four hours to work it out, so don't be disheartened if you don't get it straight away. We hope you enjoyed this video. There's going to be more uh, parts to this series on the Bias Bike 101. And if you enjoy our channel, you can come over and uh, join the hopelessness by subscribing to our channel and watching all our stuff. That's the end of the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, there's a button for that. We'll always be hopeless, and we'll see you in the next one.